Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We have the following recursion or difference equation. Eta n plus 1 is equal to 1 minus the square root of 1 minus eta n divided by 1 plus the square root of 1 plus eta n. Eta 1 is equal to 1. We are interested in the following limit. Limit of 4 to the power n, eta n as n tends to infinity. Let's investigate first the sequence eta n. If eta n is between 0 and 1, and note that eta 1 is in this interval, then eta n plus 1 is also in the same interval. And this is clear from the expression for eta n plus 1, which is given by this ratio with a numerator that is strictly less than the denominator. Let's compute the ratio of eta n plus 1 to eta n. We take this right-hand side and divide by eta n. Note that 1 minus eta n is a number between 0 and 1. And because of this, the square root of 1 minus eta n is greater than or equal to 1 minus eta n. Multiply both sides by minus 1, then add 1. The numerator is upper bounded by eta n. Eta n plus 1 divided by eta n is upper bounded by eta n divided by eta n, 1 plus the square root 1 plus eta n. These two guys go away for the right-hand side here and for eta n between 0 and 1. The maximum that we can get is when eta n is equal to 0. And in this case, the right-hand side is equal to 1 half. The conclusion is that eta n plus 1 divided by eta n is less than or equal to 1 half. Eta 2 is less than or equal to 1 half eta 1. Eta 1 is equal to 1. So eta 2 is less than or equal to 1 half. Eta 3 is less than or equal to 1 half eta 2, which is less than or equal to 1 half. Eta 3 is less than or equal to 1 over 4. What we have here is that eta n is upper bounded by 1 over 2 to the power n minus 1. For every positive integer n, eta n is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. If we take the limit of 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 as n tends to infinity, the limit is 0 by the sandwich theorem. The limit of eta n as n tends to infinity exists and is exactly equal to 0. The sequence eta n starts at 1 and decays towards 0. Let's introduce another sequence, which is dn. dn is the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x to the power 4. We integrate from 0 to the square root of eta n. Note that dn can be lower and upper bounded. The integrand is equal to 1 when x is equal to 0. As x increases, the integrand increases. We can lower bound by the value of the integrand at x equals 0, which is 1. dn is greater than or equal to the square root of eta n. This function is strictly increasing. As an upper bound, we can use the value of the function evaluated at the upper limit of integration, which is the square root of eta n. We can upper bound this by 1 over the square root of 1 minus this upper limit raised to the power 4. That's eta n squared. And this gives us square root eta n times 1 over the square root of 1 minus eta n squared. We make use of these two inequalities later. dn plus 1 is the same integral here, but the upper limit of integration is the square root of eta n plus 1. We want to establish a relation between dn and dn plus 1. Let's start with this integral here, and we will do this apparently preposterous change of values. We set x equal to the square root of 1 minus the square root of 1 minus y squared divided by 1 plus the square root of 1 plus y squared. As a function of y, this is what the function looks like. It is bijective when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. Now, what is the value of y when x is the square root of eta n plus 1? Put x equal to this quantity, we can square both sides, we get eta n plus 1 is equal to 1 minus the square root of 1 minus y squared over 1 plus the square root of 1 plus y squared. But eta n plus 1, according to our difference equation, is 1 minus the square root of 1 minus eta n divided by 1 plus the square root of 1 plus eta n. When x is equal to the square root of eta n plus 1, y squared is equal to eta n. And if this is the case, then y itself is the square root of eta n. This is the motivation behind using this particular substitution. Our goal was to change the integration limits from 0 to the square root of eta n plus 1 to 0 to the square root of eta n, hoping that this will help us establish a relationship between dn plus 1 and dn. But of course, we will have to rewrite the integral in terms of the new variable y. Let's hope that we will end up with an integrand that is proportional to 1 over the square root of 1 minus y to the power 4. If this is the case, we are able to write down dn plus 1 as some factor times dn. Let's proceed in slow motion. In the integrand, replace x by this square root. We will get this term here. Because we have x to the power 4, this square root will disappear, and those guys will be squared like this. What about dx? dx is dy 1 over 2 times this square root. By the chain rule, we need to differentiate this ratio here. The denominator is squared. Upstairs, we have the derivative of this multiplied by 1 plus the square root of 1 plus y squared minus the derivative of this times 1 minus the square root of 1 minus y squared. 
from here, we can take as a common factor y divided by the square root of 1 minus y squared, the square root of 1 plus y squared. Note that what we have in the denominator is the square root of 1 minus y to the power 4, which is what we want to have. The remaining terms are 1 plus the square root of 1 plus y squared, square root of 1 plus y squared, and then the minus sign, 1 minus the square root of 1 minus y squared, the square root of 1 minus y squared. This bracket can be simplified to give us the square root of 1 plus y squared minus the square root of 1 minus y squared plus 2. Let's go here. Multiply the numerator and the denominator by 1 plus the square root of 1 plus y squared. Here it is in the numerator. Downstairs, this vector will enter squared. So this one will become the square of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus y squared minus this term here. We have the difference between two squares. So this square root can be written as the product of two square roots. In one of them, we have the difference of these two quantities, and in the other, we have the sum. Let's focus on this term. Here it is in the numerator, and it appears also here, squared, and it appears here under the square root. These three guys together will give us 1 over the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus y squared. This term, which comes from here, will cancel with this term, which comes from here. These are the remaining terms. We have 1 half. We have these two guys together giving us the square root of 1 minus y to the power 4. But then we have other surviving terms. Let's try to multiply this by this by this. Here are the three brackets. Multiply these two guys together first and then multiply by the third bracket. We get many terms, but also many cancellations. We end up with y squared times this bracket here. This trivial product is in the denominator under square root. So the result is that we have y, the square root of 2 plus the square root of 1 plus y squared minus the square root of 1 minus y squared. And this is what we have here. In other words, all terms cancel except this 1 half and the square root of 1 minus y to the power 4 in the denominator. The n plus 1 is equal to 1 half, and this is our integral, which is exactly equal to bn. There is this simple relation between bn plus 1 and bn. bn plus 1 is just 1 half bn. b2 is equal to 1 half b1. b3 is 1 half b2, which is 1 half b1, so it's 1 fourth b1. Generally, bn is equal to 1 over 2 to the power n minus 1 b1. b1 is this integral here with the upper limit set to 1. We can evaluate this integral by doing the change of variables t equal to x to the power 4. When we do this, this integral here without the 1 fourth is the data function. It's beta of this number plus 1 and this number plus 1. Specifically, this integral without 1 over 4 is beta of 1 fourth and 1 half. In terms of the gamma function, this is gamma of 1 over 4, gamma 1 over 2, which is the square root of pi. In the denominator, we have gamma of the sum, which is 3 fourth. We can use reflection to write down gamma of 3 over 4 in terms of gamma 1 over 4. The product is equal to pi divided by sine pi times 1 over 4. So that's sine pi over 4. That's 1 over square root 2. This product here is equal to the square root of 2 times pi. 1 over gamma 3 fourth is equal to gamma 1 over 4 divided by square root 2 times pi. There is square root pi in the numerator. So we end up with the square root pi in the denominator. If we multiply both sides by 2 to the power n, we get that 2 to the power n times bn is gamma of 1 fourth squared divided by the square root of 8 pi. Let's make use of the bounds that we have established for bn. We call that this is greater than or equal to 1 and is less than or equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus square root eta n to the power 4. These are the bounds that we have on bn. Square all sides, so we have eta n is less than bn squared is less than eta n times 1 over 1 minus eta n squared. These two inequalities can be rewritten as follows. From here, we have eta n is less than bn squared. And if we take this inequality, we have that eta n is greater than bn squared times 1 minus eta n squared. Multiply all sides by 4 to the power n, because our interest is the limit of 4 to the power n eta n as n tends to infinity. In the middle, we have 4 to the power n eta n. Then we have, on the right-hand side, 4 to the power n times bn squared, which can be written as 2 to the power n bn, all squared. We have an expression for 2 to the power n bn. On the left-hand side, we have the same quantity, and then we have this bracket here, 1 minus eta n squared. The right-hand side is gamma of 1 fourth to the power 4, divided by 8 pi. What about the left-hand side? This term here is the same quantity. 
And then we have this bracket, which tends to one as n tends to infinity because eta n tends to zero as n tends to infinity. By the sandwich theorem, the limit of four to the power n eta n exists and is equal to this quantity here. 